Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah, salam alaykum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh, alhamdulillah, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Asim sin, peace and blessing, his beloved and our beloved Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, today we'll finish off the section on uh, al-awamir wa nawahi. So it's, uh, al-nahi is like an extension of amr, it's obviously prohibited form, um, which is the opposite, where amr asks you to do something and nahi uh, prevents you from doing something. So let's get started. And so we learned about Amr last week. We learned about uh, majaz and uh, haqiqi meanings of words. We're going to be today go into finish Nahi and then we're going to start on the probably the most important, probably one of the most important discussions. Um, and I'll, when I go to his Am and Khas, then we're going to cover Am today. Am meaning the universal um, or the general, and Khas is the uh, particular applicability or the specific um, in terms of usul of fiqh. These words, obviously, they'll have it in your languages. You might have um, in Urdu and other languages, you have these words that mean certain things. They overlap. But uh, similarly in Arabic, they have a linguistic meaning, but they also have a specific uh, technical meaning when it comes to usul of fiqh. Um, all right. And similar. So the address of Allah Almighty includes the. Uh, this is one slide off. Yeah, so um, the address of Allah Almighty includes the believers, men and women. As for the uh, forgetful adolescents and the insane, they are not being addressed, right? The unbelievers are addressed with the branches of the law, with what is required for its soundness, which is Islam, as is, in the, as is the saying of Almighty Allah, what caused you to enter the fire? They will say, we are not among those who pray. And Imam uh, in the commentary I'll read that believers enter within the spoke uh, within the scope of the speech of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The subject of disbelievers will come. Those who are forgetful, minors, and insane, uh, Ibn Qasim includes also all unconscious, do not enter into those addressed. Meaning that in the khitab, in the address of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, meaning towards because the amr is given in the speech of form. Uh, in, in the form of speech. So when the address is being made, the speech is being made, the amr or the nahi is being made, then this aura that is made to the person, um, who are excluded from this? So the kuffar, the believers enter this, in, this, in this, and the kuffar will discuss in a moment, those who are forgetful, the nasi, the person who's forgotten, the minors and insane do not enter into those address since legal responsibility has been lifted from them. Once someone ceases to be forgetful, for example, he's ordered to rectify what he has missed during his forgetfulness, like making up missed prayers and reimbursing damaged property. Non-believers are intended recipients of the particulars of sacred law and on that which are required for its valid performance. Um, uh, Islam, because of the Quranic verse, what led you into the flame? They will say because they were not of those who prayed. The verse continues, nor were of those who fed the poor, but we used to talk of vanities um, with the vain talkers and we used to deny the, the day of requital till certainly death overtook um, us. The significance of them being addressed by this verse is this punishment um, uh, for those actions since it is not valid for them to perform them because the actions are dependent upon intentions, which is dependent upon Islam. These actions are not held against them after entering Islam as an enticement to enter Islam. So, so the believers are addressed. Just give me one second.
Right. So the believers are, addre- um, are addressed. Uh, Sobi, uh, the adolescent, it's translated as adolescent, and in this book it's translated as minors. Uh, basically is pre-pubescent, meaning pre the age of puberty. So puberty generally translates becoming Bader. And Bader has reached three ways or four ways. Three ways, either they have a wet dream, um, or there is a hair on the a pubic region, right? So it uh, doesn't include anywhere else, just on the pubic region. Um, or they reach the age of 15 years, according to the Hijri calendar, which is about 14 years and seven months. It doesn't have to be these three things together. It, just one of these things uh, is enough uh, to establish. Um, for a female, obviously, her hay monthly period, uh, that is a fourth thing that's specific to the ladies, uh, to the girls, uh, would mean that they have reached the age of Balir or they are Islamically mature. Um, there's another one mentioned in the books, pregnancy, but pregnancy cannot exist unless hate is there. It's impossible to have a pregnancy without a hate. Um, the voice changing specifically is more to do with the boys, uh, voice changing, um, having a beard or moustache or the, the body um, cha- you know, growing uh, very quickly. They call them growth, growth spurts. Uh, these are not factors in deciding whether a person has reached the age of um, is balil or not. Uh, like if they become taller all, all of a sudden, doesn't mean they're badir, right? The last one that is there, like in terms of time factor, is 15. So the 14 years and seven months, 40, about, about 14 years and seven uh, in the Gregorian calendar. Um, and by that age, they are Islamically badir, mature, zakat, fara salat, fasting, all these things are part of the them, right? So now they're not, they're not, they're not to be treated um, like children. Um, to a certain degree, they're responsible for themselves. They still have to be groomed and, um, what's the word for it, trained into adulthood, right? They have to be, uh, like, especially the mothers for the daughters and the fathers for the sons, they have to help them into manhood and womanhood. Um, but Islamically, they are now responsible for their own actions because they are ad- Islamically, they are balad, they are responsible now. Whatever tarbiya really you need to do was to do it before that age. All right. Um, so the, the children that are, and children are of, uh, when I say children, what he says, the adolescents, which is the subi, which is a child, which is, they are not legally obligated. So the khitab is not towards children um, or, or towards the one forgetful or the one that is insane. The word that is used in Arabic is majnoon. Um, my teacher, Mufti he wrote a recent uh, masala. It's quite a detailed fatwa, um, about a dozen pages on, um, what do you call it, on someone who's got autistic, a husband who's autistic or he's got some sort of mental condition, right, that he had acquired maybe after. I don't think he's autistic, but maybe autistic. I, remember, I, I can't remember the exact uh, condition, but uh, because generally the word majnoon is very broad, right? And the word majnoon or insane is translated here and he is translated as insane as well. That a person, uh, what's the definition of ins- uh, one of the dictionary mentioned it, that a person is not able to distinguish between that which is Hassan and which is Qabih. That which is good and bad cannot discern what is good and what is bad and cannot um, comprehend the consequences or the ramifications of things. So they're not able to project forward that um, how things will turn out, the consequences or the ends of things, right? Um, general, these are the ways to, but in simple terms, they're able to not distinguish between right and wrong. If they don't have that discerning, that means like that, that discerning quality, then this is considered majnoon for sharia terms, right? Now today, this is, there are so many sub-classifications of mental illness, schizophrenia, um, shape, you know, there's like a spectrum of even of uh, autism, right, Asperger's, on and on and on and on, like there's, there's a whole list of um, uh, mental conditions that people, uh, uh, dementia for in the seniors, a lot protect us all, but dementia, um, Alzheimer's, etc. these are all mental conditions, right? So there's so many, but uh, in general terms, a person who becomes unaware of what's happening around them or they're unable to discern uh, anything, and this can be of varying decree- degrees as well. Um, Rasulullah said, uh, that 
the obligation of is lifted from my ummah, is lifted from khata uh, wa by by mistake. If you do something accidentally, you're excused. Wa nisyan and forgetfulness. Uh, there's a narration by Ali radiallahu anhu, it's in Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi, and Ibn Majah as well, Imam Ahmed also narrated this narration, that the, the pen has been lifted from three, from the sleeping person till he wakes up. Right? A person who's sleeping, while they're asleep, they're not obligated, right? Because they're not in control of their faculties. Um, the young person, the child, that until he reaches, has a wet dream or he has a um, uh, nocturnal emission, that's another way, but basically he becomes baligh um, or she becomes baligh, right? And the third one is a majnoon until he has sense, until he knows. So this is talking about a majnoon that has uh, episodes, has uh, episodes, it's called episodes. Um, a person might have an episode for half a day, then they come back to their normal senses, right? So until while he's in that episode, he's not, the pen, Rasulullah SAW said, the pen has been lifted from him. There is no hisab on him in while he's uh, in that episode. Um, Sadis of two types, uh, Mumayyiz and Ghair Mumayyiz. Mumayyiz is the one, he's still a child that can distinguish between right and wrong. That's, I think I've explained this before. Mumayyiz, so the reward is written for him, but the sin is not. And this is by the Fadl of Allah, the grace of Allah, and the Rahmah of Allah, and the kindness of the Karam of Allah, that a child who has not reached the age is not baligh yet, but can discern between right and wrong and does a good action. Right, knowing that it's good, they are rewarded for their good. But if they did a sin while they're a child, such a child, then they don't. Um, then the sin is not rich. The sin is lifted from them. So only the pen of sin is lifted, and the pen of good deeds still writes. Um, the forgetful person, um, sorry, the majnoon. Um, I just wrote the definition here somewhere. Mixing of his discerning. So he mixes up the discerning mental capacity. The strength of his mental capacity, discerning mental capacity, um, that he's unable to discern between that which is good and bad, and he doesn't understand the consequence of things. That's what a majnoon is. Um, so as for the kafir, the disbelievers, um, the kafir will be judged firstly on their asal kufr, their original kufr. This is their first major thing. Before any other judgment, this is what they judge them. And as an extension, though, we judge for every sin and every wajib that they abandon, every sin that they commit, so zina, murder, and so forth, they have the sin. So the kuffar will not judge just on their kufr. That's one thing. Let's say there are two kafirs, and both kafirs will be judged on the original uh, sin of kufr itself. And as an extension of that, their punishment will be of varying degrees based on all the other sins that they committed, of which they are also being addressed by the sharia. So the unbelievers are addressed with the branches of laws, meaning, and the, the proof that is presented at the ayat that is given there, they're given there, مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرْ قَالُوا لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ Right? So, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا كَسَلَتْ رَهِينَ إِلَّا أَصْحَابُ الْيَمِينَ um, Next. Right? إِلَّا أَصْحَابُ الْيَمِينَ so they, they be asked, the kuffar, they ask, everyone will be detained and held because of what they did, except the people of the right, those who will be given their book of deed in, in the right hand, who will be in the gardens and asking about the guilty ones. What has brought you to the saqar, that is Jahannam, one of the names of Jahannam? They will say, we were not among those who offered salat. So the kuffar, they are asked, and this is qualified, that it is kuffar, it's not Muslims that are in, in, in saqar, this conversation that is happening, we were not among those who offered salat and we did not give food uh, to the needy and we indulge in mocking the truth along with those indulge. And we used to deny the day of requital, the day of qiyamah, until, so that the denial of the day of qiyamah means what? They're, they are kafirs, they're disbelievers. Until when we were overtaken with that which is certain. So some kafirs do certain sins while others don't. They'll be treated accordingly, meaning that they'll be punished their sins are factored into the punishment. The more sins that they committed, the more evil that they did, the more the punishment will be more intense uh, uh, on that. So, and when it says that um, uh, we were deniers, right? We were, wa kunna nukadhibu bi um So nukadhib is the denial or making takdib, making something a lie. So that means that they are kufar. They didn't pray. 
he will feed, they mock from the kindness and karam and fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, someone who becomes Muslim, right? All of these sins are uh, forgiven. And they're not just forgiven, they're turned into good deeds as well, right? Um, and this is what, like, Amr, uh, Amr ibn Asa radiallahu anhu, when he asked Rasulullah, he's worried about his past, right? Some of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, like Amr ibn Asa, they fought against Rasulullah sallallahu for a long time. But at the end of their life, they became radiallahu anhu, Abu Sufyan ibn Harb radiallahu anhu, or Abu Sufyan ibn al um, uh, another Abu Sufyan, uh, Ibn, Har- Ibn Haris, right? Like Abu Sufyan Ibn Haris, he as a cousin of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He basically fought Islam for 20 years. But right at the end, he became Muslim, right? Like, like uh, before Fatah Makkah, they became Muslim. And they don't just become Muslim, they become people who spread Islam, they become Sahaba, we say, Radhi Allah, and their name, Radhi Allah, and Jama'in. So uh, that's from the kindness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the karam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the rahmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fadl, the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that, um, you know, Rasulullah sallam, don't you know that Islam demolishes, wipes out, extinct, whatever that was done before, Islam forgives all of that, right? Whatever sins that were done uh, before, but that's out of the kindness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in a way, like I told, like, you know, new Muslims, you're very lucky. You know, you start with a clean slate and all your sins get turned into good deeds. You know, this is um, uh, the kindness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, and we have a long list of Allah forgive us, forgive us, but uh, so many things to get to forgive, forgive them. Um, now, it continues. Um, the, com- uh, the command is to do something is a prohibition of doing its opposite. And a prohibition of something is a command to do its opposite. The prohibition, the nahi, is a, is a call to lead an action by word to a subordinate in the manner of an obligation and which indicates the moral corruption of what is prohibited. The grammatical form of the command might be used in that its intention is to convey permissibility, a rhetorical threat, equality between two actions or transformation into something else. So let's go through that. Uh, some of these are very similar they're like the reverse of Amr. We studied Amr or the uh, imperative form of the command form last week. Um, so the command to perform something specific is a prohibition from performing its opposite. The prohibition of performing something specific is a command to perform its opposite. So if he's told, remain still, it is a prohibition from moving. And if he's told, don't move, it is a command to remove motionless. This is, to translate, Sheikh Musa Ferba says, this is when there is only one alternative. When there are several alternatives, then it is known with certainty that one of them gets the opposite ruling, but is unsure which one. Like, for example, if you tell somebody uh, this point that he's making, and I'll go through this in a moment, but if you say, sit down, right, then you're giving the order to not stand, but also not to run, not to walk, not to fly, not to lie down, you're just asking the person to sit down, right? That's what he means about like there's one. Generally, we understand that when you say someone to sit, you mean don't stand. And if someone is stand, you tell someone to stand up, that means you don't want them to sit down. It's usually as one opposite. But if you tell someone to stand, it could mean stop running, right? Stand still, stop. You know, it could have it, uh, it could have many meanings, right? When you stop somebody, it could be the opposite. Generally, it's the opposite, but this is only when there's one option. Uh, but sometimes there, it, is, it isn't about one option. All right. The prohibition is used uh, using an utterance to invite. So this is a definition that's like a reverse definition of Amr. The nahi or the prohibition is using an utterance to invite an action from an inferior, right? An action from an inferior in a way that conveys obligation. It follows what preceded like concerning a definition of commands. We went through this. Categorical prohibition indicate, in the legal sense, the invalid, invalidity of the prohibited things. So we learn about sahih and uh, fasid, like at the beginning, right at the beginning. So the invalid, um, so categorical prohibition indicate, in the legal sense, the invalidity of the prohibited thing. That which you've been stopped is, is to do with fasad, right? That is fasid. With respect to acts of worship, whether in itself was prohibited, uh, for example, woman praying or pray, fasting during the menses, or because of something it entailed, fasting in the day of immolation, 
which is the day of Eid, or on praying during the times wherein it is offensive to do so. With respect to transactions, prohibition indicates invalidity if it goes back to the contract itself, for example, buying whatever a toss pebble happens to fall on, or because of something intrinsic, selling an animal which has not yet been born, or because of something external to which it is inextricably linked, for example, such as selling a one dirham or two. I'll explain this in a moment. But if the prohibited matter is not inextric uh, in, uh, inextricably linked, that is making ablution with st st stolen water and buying during the time of Friday prayer, it does not invalid, indicate invalidity, contrary to what the author's phrasing indicates, right? And the last bit of this section, the verb phrase or command may be mentioned, for example, while uh, what is mentioned by the imperative is mere permissibility, a threat, right? Uh, uh, for example, do as you will. Equality between two things, for example, be patient or impatient, spontaneous formation. So nahi can be used for different reasons, not necessarily to pro is prohibited. Like amr can be used depending on how you use it in a sentence. So it could be just, as we discussed earlier, like amr can be mubah. Nahi can also be explained to you that this thing is permissible or the opposite is permissible. A threat, Allah says, do what you want, right? Like do what you want, you're going to find out. Right, so do as he will is not um, uh, is a threat to stop you, right? Or equality between things: be patient or don't be patient. Uh, be patient, don't be patient. It's not telling you prohibit stopping from not being patient. This is a equality between two things. Right? It doesn't make, it doesn't make a difference whether you do this or that. Um, or spontaneous formation. So, for example, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying at the point of that He turned the Bani Israel, a group of Bani Israel, into apes. So be you apes, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, while he's given that aura, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says them as a punishment, right? So this is uh, nahi being used uh, for, uh, or amr and nahi being used for, um, uh, for other than um, uh, the, the verbal phrase of commands might be mentioned as um, uh, for other than, uh, other than uh, prohibition or amr, right? So just explaining this part, um, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses in the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in uh, Surah Hujurat, La yakhtab ba'adukum ba'adu. La yakhtabu ba'adu ba'adu. That uh, some of you should not do riba, uh, backbite each other. Oh, and not, like, la, before they say, wala tajassus. And do not spy. Wala tajassus. This is the, the, the prohibitive form in the Quran. Right? The simple form, prohibitive form that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, do not um, do not um, backbite. Do not. That isn't a nahi. It's like amr is compulsory. This is also compulsory. Um, like amr, it also excludes ishara, kitaba. It has to be bilqol. It has to be in uh, addressed in speech for the amr and nahi to mean anything. It has to be in speech, as it is in the case of the Quran. Um, it, when he, when you say, "Oh Allah, don't punish me," now the form is considered nahi. Don't punish. But of course, when you talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we are not, it's not, a, it's a request. It's you're begging Allah, it's a dua. Also, like when it's between two, remember the definition given here? It's from a, 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 a nahi is given from someone higher to the lower, subordinate. Of course, it's not applicable to Allah because he's Rabbul Alameen, right? Um, also, if two equals, so this is iltimas, it's a request. When you give an order, it's not a, it's not a prohibition, uh, sorry, if you get Amr, we give nahi, the nahi, same like in, we use this word before, iltimas, it's a request uh, from, an, uh, um, uh, from, a, from an equal, right? Um, he mentioned about fasad there, that um, fasad is, uh, makes a transaction ineffective, as we learned before with Amr, and makes an ibadah unacceptable. And he gave some scenarios there. Um, and he broke down the manhi anhu, the things that are prohibited into three types. And in terms of facade, in the context of facade, meaning that the action is invalid. Firstly, the actual ibadah or mu'amala transaction has been forbidden. The actual act has been forbidden. The actual transaction has been forbidden. So it's manhi wa anhu in itself. Uh, for example, marriage to a mahram. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, حُرِّمَتْ عَلَيْكُمْ مَهَاتُكُمْ وَبَنَاتُكُمْ وَأَخْوَاتُكُمْ till the end, right? So Allah has forbidden upon you. Um, your uh, mother's nikah to your mothers, to your 
daughters, to your sisters, etc., and all those mahrams that are mentioned. So this is a manhi anhu. This is a thing that has been pro- prohibited, right? Um, uh, made haram or prohibited um, directly in itself. There's no, there's no way around this. Um, that this is not a. If you fix a certain part of it, that this transaction will be fixed. Or riba, for example, riba is forbidden in itself. You can't give it a different name. If the, the nature of the transaction is riba, it will always be haram, right? Or selling something haram, like the actual thing is haram, like alcohol or let's say uh, swine meat, pig meat, right? The actual thing is haram. You're not allowed to sell this thing in itself, right? It's forbidden in itself to transact. The transaction from the ons, from the outset, from the beginning is actually forbidden. The second type uh, of manhina anhu is the external, but connected to the act. Like you can say the first one is like the rukan or the thing itself, or it's like a sharp. The second one is like more like a sharp. So for example, wearing silk, right, is haram. Covering your aura with the silk, the salat becomes batin, invalid, right? Silk is haram in itself for men. That is for men, it's haram. But it invalidates the salat if it is used to cover the aura, right? And in this Specific discussion, there's a lot of ikhtilaf. Among the scholars, there's a lot of ikhtilaf. Among this, among the usulin, there's a lot of discussion. Whoever um, prays with silk to cover his aura, the salat is invalid. However, if you made a hat, let's say you made a hat or a head covering from silk, right? Then that, that the salat, he'll be sinful, but his salat will be valid, right? Um, there's the other discussion of uh, water, that is maqsu, um, right? Um, that is, um, um, uh, what do you call it? If water is um, a usurp, someone like takes it by force from somebody, right? Or steals the water. Now, for the Hanbalis, uh, in this masala, that water, your wudu will not be valid. It actually, it's an external thing to the act of salat, and your salat will not be valid because of it. Your wudu is not valid. So the, the action of wudu will not be valid because the source of water is from an invalid uh, source. So there'll be facade of the wudu because the shart of the wudu is not fulfilled. The sh- one of the shart of wudu is that the water has to be acquired in a mubah, permissible manner. Right? The third one, so you got the uh, number one, Mahina Anhu, is the actual thing, like riba or hurrimat alaykum, mahatukum, marriage to a, a mahram, right? Is forbidden in itself. There is the actual thing is forbidden, or selling something haram, or there's a sharp from the thing itself. It's sort of attached to the thing, but it's external to the act, right? It's it's um uh it's it's not directly in the act itself, right? The actual act is fine, but this is a sharp external to it that is not invalidates it, makes it fasid. The third one is the ex, it's external. It's not even tied to it. It's not a rukan internally within it or a shart. Um, uh, for example, wudu from a container made out of dahak from gold, right? A bowl made out of gold, right? Um, the person will be uh, sinful, but the wudu is valid, right? It's not connected with a shart or wudu. And in this as well, there's a lot of ikhtilaf. There's a lot of discussion. There's a lot of arguments, counter arguments. It's, it's a, you know, sort of, this is a drawn argument. So these are like three ways to look at fasad. Now, um, so it mentions here the grammatical forms for the command might be using, but int- intention is to convey permissibility. Um, we read, learned about the that um, um, uh, the mukataba, the arrangement with the slave, we did last week, that the arrangement with the slave who organizes his freedom, then, um, you know, uh, that um, the Amr here. Is given for um, permissibility because in the end it says if it is good, right? If they're good, then um, um, or for example, like for Juma, right? First you're forbidden from like your order to go, and then after an order is given to you to go out, and first of all, uh, you're given an order to come for Juma, then you're told go out into the go out into the world and seek from the Father of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is allowing permissibility now to leave and work on the day of Jummah, continuing the rest of the day working. So this was for ibaha or permissibility or in, uh, in um, 
is uh, uh, tasbiru. If you make patient, not patient, salana is the same for you, right? So this is a, a rhetorical threat, and between uh, two two actions, you do this or this one, it's the same for you, right? So this is not a amar for doing one or a nahi for not doing sabr. Do sabr or don't do sabr, right? This is for it's a rhetorical threat, and also lastly, um, uh, the I mentioned as well that. Um, uh, transformation to something else regarding the Bani Israel when they're told to turn into um, uh, into apes. All right. Uh, the next uh, section is about Aam and Khas. And today we'll do uh, the section Aam. Aam um, tra- is translated, I will read the slide first. Aam, uh, general and specific. As for the general meaning, it is what generalizes two or more things. It comes from the phrase, I include Zayd Umar in the gift. And I include all people in the gift. And here the translation is universal and particular applicability. So universal and particular uh, uh, applicability. Universal applicability arm is what includes two or more things without constraint. That without constraint um, is added on, and this is more precise in the commentary, is it, it makes the um the definition more precise. It comes from the phrase I include Zayd and Omar with the gift. And I include men in their entirety with the gift. And that is, I included them with it. Since universally includes comprehensiveness, right? Um, so these are the linguistic uh, meanings of it. So now we come into a very important topic in Usul of Fiqh, which is uh, what the word indicate, the Dalalat al What is the word telling us? What is the word indicating? Is a word general or universal, uh, you know, uh, general or universal, slash universal, it's, this, this word is used interchangeably. So let's go by universal or specific, right? Um, the word um, arm, even the word imama, turban, right? Why? Because it covers uh, covers the head, right? Uh, uh, imama, um, basically, it's 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 a meaning that something encompasses some, uh, two things. So that which encompasses without limit. That without limit, without hasab, is very important. Um, so if I say, for example, um, so this is a caveat that even Dr. Mutla, it's a commentary there, he mentions that, that this is a more pre- precise definition, bila hasrin, and here he calls it min ghayri hasrin, which means the same thing, right? He says bila hasrin from another book, and it's a caveat, also like a uh, little disclaimer, or like a precision making the definition more precise. Um, so two or more things without a uh, limit, right? So meaning that if you are restricting it, like you got a category, right? So when you say akrim honor all the stu- honor the students. If you say honor the students, that means that this is general. All it means all the students, right? There's no restriction which students. So there's no limit on this, right? This is what arm means. It includes all the individuals of that category. In this case, students, right? If a student is a category, all the members of that, all the students, individual members, all the students of that, they're all included. When you say akrim, honor the student, all the students. A word that encompasses without limits, for example, students in this case. Uh, in, the, in the example, Sheikh Mutala gave in his dabs. All right. Um, arba ismul wahid al al alif wa lam wa ismul jamal. Sorry, I'm reading the Arabic. Its wordings are for a single noun with a definite article, plural nouns with a definite article. Undefined nouns such as whoever or, or um, animate beings, whatever for inanimate beings, whichever for anything, what uh, wherever for place, whenever for time, whatever for interrogatives, um, consequences, and other things, and no for uh, and no for or la for indefinite nouns. General generality is a characteristic of speech. It is not permissible to claim general application actions which are not so. And whatever has a defined application. So, and this is the last slide for today. Today's a little bit shorter than usual. Uh, listen. So, I'll read the from this book. Um, the phrase establish the phrases established for universal applicability for um, are four. S- number one, singular nouns made definite uh, using the definite article alif lama. So, in Arabic, da uh, is al. So uh, generally, um, in a simple way, kitab means book, kitabun. Al-kitabu means the book, right? 
Um, so it's that's general with alif lam. It's called the definite article. So, for example, man al insan is indeed in loss. In al insan al fi khusr. The here al um, is used um, a singular noun is used with the al article, right? But what what's the meaning here? Is it talking about a specific human being? But this al insan is referring to all the members of the category human being, all the genus, the jins. This al is for jins. This al is for genus in English. Uh, that whole category. So, for example, you say alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. When you say alhamdu, are you talking about the ham, the praise, a specific praise? Are you talking about? That's why we say sare tarif Allah You know, all the praises for all the praise are due to Allah Subhanahu. Why are we saying all the praises? Where's all here in terms of when you look at the alham, it means all praises, but we're just saying daham. It's not daham, it means all the possibility of praises that ever can exist from this genus of hamd, of, uh, of praise. They all belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I hope that makes sense, inshallah. Um, two, and as I said last week, now we're getting into the little bit, little bit, it's not, it's still easy to understand even if you don't know Arabic, um, but. Um, Alhamdulillah, good. Um, mass nouns ma uh, made definite by the definite article, for example, fight the politics, right? Fight the whole category of mushrikeen, right? Ambiguous nouns, so Jama is used, I'll go through this again in a, in a moment. Um, ambiguous nouns like whoever or sentient beings. So whoever enters my house is safe, right? Whoever enters my house, whoever, right, is ambiguous. These nouns are ambiguous. They're not talking about a specific whoever. Right? Who's this whoever? Whoever, right? Whatever for non sentient beings, whatever uh, came to me from you, I have taken it. Whichever, right? Interrogative, conditional, or a positive for them both, sentient and non sentient. Sentient means that it's a living, aqil um, and ghair aqil, like that uh, human being and non human being, right? For example, whichever of my slaves comes to you, be good to him. And whichever you desire, I give to you, right? So it can be used for, uh, it can be used as a question, interrogative means question, as a, uh, um, a conditional, for example, um, um, how would you, um, conditional like, uh, whichever of my students passes, he will get a gift. Well, that's, a, that's a conditional. Yep. Um, wherever for the spatial, for example, wherever you are, I'm with you. Whenever for the temporal, for time, uh, spatial to do with space, location. Uh, whenever, uh, whenever you wish, I will come to you. Uh, whenever you wish, whatever for interrogatives. Again, for question, uh, whatever uh, do you have? Whatever for consequence with consequences. For example, whatever you do, you'll be rewarded for. Another version of the manuscript has the words predicates, predicates, which in, in uh, predicates instead of consequence, but based on the commentary, for example, I will do whatever you do, and other things such as predicates following the first version of the manuscript and rewards following the second version. Anyway, these ambiguous nouns like ma, man, uh, etc. Um, uh, ma, man, ayu, um, ayu. Um, Aina and so forth, Ma, all of these ones, uh, they basically will change the meaning uh, into an arm, right? They'll become make arm. So this is the third category of arm. The fourth one is a negative with definite nouns. For example, no man is in the house. So when you say no man, you're not talking about no a specific man. So La Rajula Fidari, there's no man. There is no man. There's no nothing, no one specific. You, you might be talking about one man. Right, but you're talking about the general category. There is no one from the category of all the men that is in the house. Right, uh, universal applicability is an uh, attribute um, um, of utterance. Just give me one second, sorry. I'm just checking the Arabic for it for a moment. Yep. 
here. Um, universal applicability is an attribute of utterances. So, um, is from the uh, applicability. So, it said, means sifat in nut, right? Um, am is an attribute of speech, right? It is not permissible to claim universal applicability for actions and other things which to take their course. So, for example, the Prophet ﷺ combined two prayers while traveling, which is in Bukhari, Sahih Bukhari. It cannot be a case of universal, it cannot be made arm, since the action does not include both long and short journeys since it took place in only one of the two. Like, what's a journey, right? Safar, every travel that you do, you do a journey to work, right? A work could be five minutes away or ten minutes away, right? So, and there's a long journeys, like you could be, have a journey for days. The Prophet ﷺ Preemption of sale, shufa. The shufa is preemptive sale where the neighbor has a right to buy, he's a right to the purchase of a property that is being sold. Like for example, if your house is attached together and the neighbor is selling the, neighbor, the, the attached property, then there is a right that the neighbor has to that uh, sale. Uh, since it does not include every neighbor due to the possibility, but does it include the hadith that says that the... Um, um, there's a hadith, the hadith does it mean by neighbor, the seventh neighbor, right? I'll go through this in a moment. See, it does not include every neighbor due to the possibility of something particular to that particular neighbor. Particular applicability khas is the opposite of universal applicability. So it is said, uh, I think that's from next week. Um, so it is said that which does not include two or more things without constraints of one man, two men, and three men. Yeah, that's for um, uh, next week, inshallah. Um, so so what is the definition of arm? In short, it is it, 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 the definition of the hukum is applicable to all members of that category. You have a jins, you have a category. Um, the hukum is applicable to all members of that category. Give the student a dollar. Oh, sorry, give the students, right? Give the students a dollar. Then it's necessary to give every single student a dollar, right? There's a long hadith of the shahud. Um, these are these are the leaders that Dr. Mutla gave in, from his side in his dars of this book in Sahih Bukhari Muslim uh, in Sahihin the long hadith on tashahud and um, uh, when he say Assalamu alaikum Nabi wa rahmatullah wa salam alaikum wa alaibadillah salihin Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when you did that you salamtum ala kulli abdin salihin fi al-sama'i wal ard Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that you've given salam to upon every Slave, righteous slave in the skies, in the heavens, and in the earth. Right? So, this example of Am, that when you get, uh, you, you have given, uh, it's, it's, it's a hukum that applies to all members of the category. Um, and Ibadullah includes all slaves. Another dalil is Rasulullah said about horses, the virtues of horses in jihad. And then someone asked Rasulullah Sallallahu um, about about uh, the donkeys. Like some people might not have horses; they're more expensive, so they had donkeys. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Nothing is revealed to me regarding that." Meaning, it was revealed to him about horses, but nothing lam yanzil aliyah. Nothing was revealed to me regardless. But then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he quoted, "But fiha, uh, there's nothing in except for this ayat." Uh, like whoever does an adhara, an atom, an iota of good, he will see it. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave that in this ayat, there's a generality, there's an arm that includes all forms of good. That if a person wants to do it, um, then they will get the reward from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Um, and these are the three uh, topics. The third topic. Um, after discussing the definition of Aam, after discuss, discussing the hukum of Aam, um, then um, uh, hukum is, it's, it's hukum is its uh, word, sorry, the tarif and the hukum. Um, uh, Imam, just uh, uh, Imam Qarafi, rahmullah, he wrote a book, two volumes on Aam and Khas only, this discussion. In this book, it's like three pages, right? But he wrote two volumes on this topic, on Aam and Khas. Um, and he, in, in this book, he mentions uh, some examples, um, like the four categories that I mentioned. These are not all the Aam that, are, that exist. These are the most uh, common and they're the most... Um, 
the, these are the most common uh, common and um, I'll send the name uh, inshallah. The, these are the uh, most common and the most obvious, right? The four categories that I mentioned, the single noun with alif lam, the uh, mass noun with alif lam, the definite article, the ambiguous nouns, third, and the negative and indefinite uh, nouns, right? The negative with indefinite, sorry, the, in, the, the negative with it. These four are only the most important and the most obvious. Uh, but he has mentioned dozens and dozens, Imam Qaraf has mentioned dozens and dozens of cases. Um, um, so uh, one of them is, for example, istisna, um, uh, exception, right? If usually... A istisna when it's mentioned, an exception. So, for example, um, all the students should, uh, you should uh, give one dollar to every student, except, except for Zaid, right? Uh, except for Zaid. Give all the students one dollar except for Zaid. What does that tell you? Usually, uh, the, or that whenever there is an exception, like, for example, Give all the in Arabic is illa or ghay, there's different words for it. Give one dollar to all the students except Zay. This word except or illa or the word of exception, right? Or another form of it. If it comes, or in English say, but give one dollar to every student, say uh, uh Zay, or give all the uh, uh other than Zay, right? When these words come, whatever is before is always arm. Right, this is one another way to know arm. If there's an exception, what are you making exception from? You're making exception from an arm, right? Um, or for example, in the Allah Yuhibbul Muhsinin, right? So the Alif Lam that's coming here, Muhsinin is a jama, right? This is one the second the, another category, right? Jama. I'm just giving you other examples of arm from the four categories. Um, uh, indeed, Allah loves. The doers of good, all muhsinin, without exception. Al muhsinin here, the alif lam is here, not for. Uh, it's a definite article, but it's here for shumul. It's for including all the members, uh, all the all the muhsinin, without exception. Um, so, for example, um, uh, the as asma mubhama, the third category, ambiguous nouns, right? Um, it doesn't indicate a specific individual or thing. Um, they are used as asma or shart. They use as nouns of condition, right? We learned that um, conditional. If you do this, you know, oh, sorry, whichever of my self comes to you, be good to him, right? That's a that's conditional, right? Whichever you desire, I'll, I'll give to you. Whichever you desire, I give to you. Conditional, right? Um, it's not talking about a specific thing. Um, uh, asma mausula. Uh, and asma ul istifham, interrogative istifham is for question. Mosula is, um, I think he translates a positives, uh, which, right? Whichever book, right? Uh, he read, he found it beneficial. I mean, he's giving an example, maybe I'm not getting it right. But these are basically asma mubhama. They are the uh, uh, ambiguous now, there's number three here. Um, And this we find in hadith as well. Uh, so, for example, man, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said on Fatah Makkah, before Fatah Makkah, man dakhala dara Abi Sufyan, fa huwa amin. Whoever enters the house of Abu Sufyan, he's amin. This is hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That whoever enters the house of Abu Sufyan, he's safe. And he has protection. Right? So, this for umum. Right? In the insan, the fi khusr, this is for umum, no a human being without exception. If he has iman and does amal and does al haq, does of sabr, then he's uh, uh, all human being is lost, is uh, except here again, ex exception is coming. So all insan is lost except, right? Remember, what I said about exemption before. Um, whoever enters the house of Abu Sufyan, meaning anybody that entered in the house of Abu Sufyan, any human being that entered the house of Abu Sufyan, he's safe, right? Or for example, the uh, um, ata kum rasul Whatever Rasulullah gives you, meaning orders you, then 
فخذوه uh, take it and whatever that he prevents you from the state refrain from that this is for umum everything that rasulullah sallam gives you right uh, that uh, that you take it that which you prevent prevents you um or for example um ay ayyuma tad'u falahu falahu al-asma al-husna whichever you call whichever way you call his are the best names right right so that whichever way uh, you call this for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right he has the most beautiful names the best names uh aynama takunu yudrikum al-mawt right wherever you may be right um wherever you may be death will reach you right death will overtake you death will death will reach you wherever you are right uh mata taqum aqum um whenever um mata taqum aqum like uh, this is a, not from, from the quran but this is a, a shaykh mutla he gave the example whenever you stand up i will stand up right um the fourth one is an indefinite right indefinite noun so if it doesn't have the alif lam article like for example we say kitabun just means a book right a book any book right um he's given a definition the negative with it with a indefinite noun so la rajulan fi dari there is not, no man in the house but he said that there is a better definition uh every it doesn't mean like right at the beginning Dr. Mutlaq explained in his commentary of this that um that this is not a criticism because Imam Juwain is so early on and he says at the start he absolves himself that he's writing just a summary he's not going to cover everything right and the work of usul al-fiqh the this branch of knowledge was advanced and developed later on like advanced further and refined and perfected uh with time and made more precise the definitions were made more preci- precise um and more accurate right um um he said that every indefinite noun every nakira in um coming after a negative will indicate uh umum general or universal right um and same thing but the thing is that this will also this applies to every nafi here he mentions um the only the negative right he only mentions um wala fi nakirat uh wala wala fi nakirat that's all he mentions he just says la right but it applies to every nafi every negative it applies to every nahi right it also um like allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in nahi la tushriku billahi shay'an right la tushrik billah do not make shirk with allah anything right so la tushrik billah is nahi right la tushrik billah is a uh, uh, is a nahi uh, but the shay'an that's coming afterwards is for umum not anything right also it, it, in the flow of the sentence if it's coming as a condition um uh, in tubdu khair uh, in tubdu or to go like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says if you show it or you hide it right um you know whatever they do openly or hiddenly in all right so just give me one second so in tubdu khairan so that if you um show um good or you hide so in tubdu is a condition so it it comes also in condition as well um so it's not only just la it's also it's uh in the commentary of this or the dars of this that it gives also also in uh, um um hal tahusu uh, a question 
um, in the question form it comes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, وَكَمَ هَلَكْنَا قَبْلَهُمْ قَرْنٍ هَلْ تُحِسُّ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ أَوْ تَسْمَعُ لَهُمْ رِكْزَ So, and how many generations we have destroyed before them? Do you sense the presence of any of them? Or hear uh, them even a whisper? Do you sense uh, from them? Do you hear them? Do you sense the presence of the people? That this is like, it's called Fifham Min Kari, right? Um, it's like, a, uh, it's used in a sense, the, the, it's, the questions used here, but the uh, the noun that is there, the indefinite, um, from any of them, right? Any of them, then that's all of them, right? Have you heard? Have you heard from any of them since? Like other people that were destroyed before, any member of those people destroyed, have you sense of any of them or hear from? Meaning the question is not asking for an answer; it's a rhetorical question. It ans the question answers itself, right? Um, it doesn't need an answer. The question itself is is istifham is, 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 is inkari or a rhetorical question, right? Um, so it can and come it can come in this type of question as well. So there's a nakira that's used there, and the nakira that is used there it is for uh, for um, uh, what do you call it for um, uh, for am for for am um, or. So what he's saying is that all these forms, whether it be nafti, I know there's some of you might not know Arabic, so therefore um, it would be good to start learning. Nafi, negative, nahi, sharp, istifham, inkari, uh, all these other things. It's not just for la, uh, for the one la that is given there, which negates the genus the genus la rajulun, uh, uh, la rajulun, um, uh, la rajulun tiddari, like there's no man in the house, right? Um, And we cannot take the action of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and say um, uh, this has umum. Like he did qasr, the example is given of qasr in salat. Um, so, you know, you cannot take that action and make it umum for all suffer, as the word suffer is used. Because suffer can be used in different ways. Um, or Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a specific uh, case. Like for example, he told Khuzayma radiallahu anhu, that his witness, his shahada is equal to two shahada. Long story behind that. But he gave a shahada, his shahada is equal to two. Um, he specifically indicated, right? Um, or, for example, the case of shufa, um, uh, preemptive, um, how does he translate? Preemption of a sale, right? The preemption of a sale. So Rasulullah said, Al jaru haqqu bi shufa jari. That a neighbor has the, um, the right to preemption of sale to his. To, to, than the neighbor, right? But you cannot generalize jar, the word jar cannot be um, generalized beyond like, because neighbors could mean anything. Oh, he's my neighbor. He lives in the same street, right? Or he lives in the same neighborhood, my seventh neighbor. Where do you draw the limit? So this is, uh, cannot be generalized. Um, so then I'll read that sentence. Generally, is a characteristic of speech. It is not a permissible to claim general application in actions, which are not so and in whatever has a defined application. Right and Sheikh uh, Musa, uh, the translation yeah, particularly uh, or applic uh, sorry, universal applicability is an attribute of utterances. It is not permissible to claim universal applicability for actions and other actions which take their course. Right, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala give us understanding, and that's it for today. Um, sorry if I sound a bit flat. I have been sick for the last week, and uh, um, and I just came back from a dars Quran in the masjid, um, which is an hour there, an hour back. And now that's so a little bit uh, tired. Uh, just the timing, unfortunately, this is 10 o'clock at night, finishing at 11 o'clock um, in Australia. So, Alhamdulillah, Kulla Hal, that's the way of the world. And so, people are you know, all, all over the places. Uh, there's some ulama today, they did some program on some, uh, I think they're in New York. So, I think the, their lesson is in a very convenient time for us here. They're asking us to attend, and it's four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So, um, Australians get to get up for tahajjud, I guess, uh, <laughs> by force. Um, but anyway, uh, maybe another way to wake up for tahajjud. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us uh, understanding. And um, I'll just get the name for Imam Qarafi's uh, book because uh, he didn't ask. Just give me one second. I don't know the book thing, actually. Let's see, let's see if I can do it.
Ja, vor allem, ich schaue. Ähm, Let's give one second. This set. Apologies. Inshallah, when I find it, I'll send it inshallah. Jazakum al-khairah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.